So we should now be live. Hi, everybody. This disembodied voice is Caitlin Cashin from the marketing team. Um, our instructors today are Marcy Sutton and Aisha Blake from the learning team, and I'm going to hand it over to them. Hello, welcome to the first installment of Gatsby Web Creators. I'm Marcy Sutton. I'm the head of learning at Gatsby and Aisha Blake. Uh, do you want to say a few words about yourself? Awesome. Um, so Gatsby is a web development framework. Uh, we're going to give you a bit of a tour through a project today on a platform called Glitch, where we can live code together and we can learn all about the foundational building blocks of building websites. So Gatsby is a website generator. It's more of an advanced tool that uses a JavaScript library called React. We are actually starting way back all the way at the beginning with the, the things that you would need to know to build any kind of website, starting with HTML. We'll get into what HTML is. We'll move on to CSS styling and eventually some JavaScript over the coming weeks. So we're meeting for an hour twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays for the next five weeks. And we're streaming live on Twitch. So you can chime in with comments or questions. You can potentially shape the content through this series by what you're interested in, topics you're passionate about. Uh, we're really, really excited to be here. And so I wanted to start off with a couple of fun facts. Aisha, what's a fun fact about you? Uh, so it sounds like... It's maybe folks can hear me now. Yep, yep, yeah. we're good. Great. <laughs> Coming through awesome. Uh, so my kind of go-to fun fact is that I was a theater kid in high school, and so as a result, I can now both juggle and unicycle. Very impressive. My fun fact is not nearly as impressive, but I once owned a goldfish named Norman for seven years, and he would jiggle every time someone would come into my room. So goldfish can live for a very long time. <laughs> Um, you might see some themes in this series that we like animals. So if you've got a favorite animal that you want to talk about or bring in pictures of in your projects, um, really anything is fair game in terms of what, what you're interested in, because we're here to create and to inspire you to build web pages that you can make into whatever you want. Websites can live on for a very long time. I have some from middle school and high school, depending if the platforms are still around. GeoCities comes to mind. That was a platform back in the day that many of us got started building our first websites. And these skills can be transferred to all kinds of things. Online learning, you might be interested in web development as a career and want to try it out. I think no matter how far your interest goes, these skills can be very useful. So let's start talking about HTML. And we've got some resources on our landing page on gatsbyjs.com. Um, there is a link to this project on Glitch. There's a final, final file on there um, on the Gatsby web creators. If you go to Glitch, it is glitch.com slash at symbol gatsby-web-creators. And each week we'll be putting a new project on here that we will show you the end result. And then on the stream, we will live code. So walk through everything in the moment um, so you can see how these projects are made. So I've got a bit of a scratch version over here where it has some of the components of the final project, but we also have a blank HTML file. So we're gonna fill this in. And if that feels daunting to you, that's okay. We're gonna take it piece by piece, step by step, and explain what makes up an HTML page. So yeah, I guess uh, we're ready to get started. Um, and if anyone has questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll try to address them as we go and get to them at the end as well. Okay, so what is Glitch? Well, it's a really neat interactive platform that we're gonna use to teach you about web development. And we can put different kinds of files in here, including HTML, which Bit of a trivia question, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So we're gonna link some pages together. We'll start with you know, what's foundational with HTML. On Friday, we'll work into more integrating content from around the web um, using things like lorem ipsum generators and different types of images and media. 
But for today, we've got um, these HTML files we'll fill in. There's also this readme.md file. This is a bit of an info page for you. Um, it's using a language called Markdown, which actually compiles to HTML. So we're starting really way back at the beginning with how HTML works. So with that, let's dive in and get started. Um, we're going to start with an intro to HTML pages. So HTML being a markup language is what we're looking at on the screen. Every web page uses HTML to create elements that have content and structure and functionality. Um, and you can use HTML all by itself. So that's what we're doing today. Aisha, what's your favorite part of HTML? Ooh, my favorite part of HTML uh, is honestly the flexibility, I think. So you talked about Neo uh, GeoCities. I think back to my days on Neopets. Uh, so I think about how that kind of gave me an outlet to create and write stories where I wasn't really, I, wasn't, I didn't really think of myself as a writer, you know? Yeah, I love HTML, how you can combine kind of feeling like a computer hacker and a writer, and you can jumble it all up together and produce stuff that can live on the internet. So in Glitch, we can live code right here. And one thing I'll show you is this little show drop down at the top of the page. When you're writing your source code, you have to see what, what is it compiled to? What does it represent in the browser? Um, which we're, I'm using Google Chrome, which is web browser. There's other web browsers like Firefox, Safari, uh, Microsoft Edge. So depending on what type of computer you have, all you will need for this series right now is a web browser. So I can open up what my page looks like using this little show. I can show it next to the code or in a new window. And something that's really neat about Glitch is that you can actually get a, it will create a URL for you. So anything that you make with Glitch, you can show to your friends, you can work collaboratively and, and pair on creating web pages. So the first thing that I need to type in is what's called a doc type. So I'm gonna type a, I'm holding the shift key on my Mac and I'm gonna do this angle bracket. So to zoom in here, the first thing in HTML is the angle brackets. So we have left and right to create a tag. Um, for a doc type, this is a special one-liner. I'm gonna type a, the angle bracket to open an exclamation point, and I'm gonna type the word doc type space HTML, and then the closing angle right bracket. This tells the web browser what type of a file it needs to load. So there's different types of formats. Um, this is just telling the browser all right, this is going to be an HTML page. So then we move into the, the major types of elements that are required for an HTML page, starting with the HTML element. So Glitch was really helpful just then. It auto-completed. I typed open angle bracket, the word HTML, close bracket, and it auto-completed with an opening and a closing tag. So some HTML tags require an opening and a closing, and closing is denoted with this slash. So a, a, um, in, after the opening uh, angle bracket, you do a, a slash and then the, the closing um, tag. So this matches that original HTML tag. Inside of there, I need to add a head. So this is another element that follows the same pattern of opening and closing. And then next to head, so not nested inside of it, but still inside of HTML, I'm gonna type body. These are the components to create a shell of an HTML page. So HTML is wrapping everything. The head contains things that are sort of behind the scenes, a little magical recipe that you can put into your HTML files. And we'll look at some of those items in detail in a moment. And then the body is everything that will actually show up on the screen. So stuff that has your content and later we'll get into styling and making it pretty. Um, but for the head, I'm gonna add the first item, which is a title. So for this, I'm gonna just say my first web page. You can title it whatever you want. And that's actually the item that will show up here in the browser. So in each tab, how I have, each tab has a name like Gatsby Web Creators, or today we're streaming on Lightstream, so that says Lightstream guest. That is actually created with this HTML title in the head. 
There's also a couple other items that we could add. There's things like meta tags. Um, so I can say meta care set equals UTF-8. And this is telling the browser which character set we're using. So depending on where you are in the world or what language you speak, what type of uh, computer system you're on, there's actually different character sets. Um, it's not something we need to think too much about and Glitch will actually auto-complete this for you but we wanted to explain to you what a meta tag is. And it is one of these behind the scenes pieces of a web page. The other thing I'm gonna add here in our title um, is a, another meta tag. And I'm gonna say meta space and then name. So name here, just like care set is what we call an attribute. So it's something that you can put on an HTML tag to give it some, some properties. So I'm gonna say a meta name viewport um, and then another space and then the word content. Um, and I'm gonna put this in here of width equals device dash width. I'm gonna put a co uh, comma and then I'll say initial dash scale equals one. And then this is what's called a self-closing tag. So we have two of these that have a, instead of a closing tag here like title, um, they close themselves. So it, you put a space and then a slash and then it closes itself. And we'll see that come up a little bit later. And Glitch is really helpful. It will normally fill these in for you, but we can also create them by hand. And the meta name viewport tag is what's handy on your mobile device. When you open a web page, that will help the browser on your phone fit to the window a little bit better. And you can play with that using, so if you have your, I'm zoomed way in here. If you have your uh, URL for your project, so for example, Gatsby dash or Gatsby WC dash scratch dot glitch dot me, you could open that up on your mobile device and test this out to see how your things are, are looking on a phone or a tablet, whatever kind of device you have. So we've got our head and um, that really gets the sort of metadata and the information behind the scenes in our web pages. And now we can move on to the really fun stuff, which is the body. Um, so let's start by adding some structure to this web page. The first thing we could add is some text, just to test to make sure that we get something. So I typed the word text and it showed up over here on the right. So voila, we have our first bit of HTML content on the page. But text by itself is a bit unwieldy. We have to wrap it in some elements and make it do what we want, kind of coerce it into a structure that we can expect and, and do things with. So I'm gonna start by adding a header element. So there's different types of elements in HTML. And if you're creating a sort of banner at the top of your web page, there's a great element for that. It's called the header. And so inside of the header, I could put some of that text I'm gonna start by putting an H1 element, so a heading one. And there's heading levels all the way up to H6. So H1, H2, H3, and so on, all the way up to six. And these denote different heading levels. So I could say, actually, let's do hello Gatsby web creators. So I've got this text. It's now showing up on the screen in this nice bold font. This is the default font on my computer. So it's what we call a serif, has little feet on it. When we get into styling next week in this live stream series, we'll be able to customize fonts and do some really crafty styling things. But we're starting with the, the good part, in my opinion, the content. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, so this is super exciting. And I really like that we're kind of starting with here's how you make something show up. Here's how you actually get going with content. Uh, we're getting a couple of questions in the chat though, Marcy, if we could maybe show how to get started with Glitch. Uh, so maybe show how to remix this project as well as start a new one of your own. Absolutely, yes. So we've got on, on our Glitch team, we've got this Gatsby Web Creators week one, day one. This is a completed version of the project that we're gonna be working on. So when you go over here, you can show the project. Um, there's also this button called Remix This. So you can remix and it will make a copy. It comes up with these really funny names, which I love. 
Um, so for example, protective lowly fact is an auto generated name. And so once you've done a remix, you can change it to your heart's desire. Um, you can also create new projects. So the, there's a little drop down up here in the left corner and you can do new project. I guess there is a remix and you can switch between projects right here. Um, so new project, there's a couple examples. There's a hello web page. That's, that's essentially what we're working on. There's also two different types. Once we, later on, we may get into some heavier JavaScript type things. But for this series, we're really focused on web pages. So if I created a new web page, it would create some of these files that we're creating by hand. Um, so we can see the head was automatically generated for us. There's some CSS, which we're gonna start with next week. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps explain how to get started. So I'm gonna go back to our Gatsby Web Creators team. And this each week will be a place that you can go to find each project that we're working on. Um, so yeah, any other questions? Or did we cover it? We did get a question about, um, you know, recordings in the documentation. And yeah, we will export a recording of every web creator session to YouTube within like an hour or two after we finish up. Um, and we'll also be keeping the Gatsby web creators web page up to date with resources and, you know, uh, different stuff that we go over here. There's also um, a mailing list that you can join where we'll uh, send out information like that as well. Um, and that mailing list as well as the web creators web page are linked in the Twitch uh, channel description. So below where you're probably watching us. Yeah, sounds good. So on the screen right now, I have the page on gatsbyjs.com slash gatsby web dash creators. Um, and so this is where each week we will put what we're going to be learning. We have a link to the Git glitch project and the GitHub files in case you have issues with glitch. I know we have some blind and disabled people who might be joining us. So if it's easier for you to not work on glitch, uh, there is a copy of the files on GitHub. So we'll place links there. You could download those files and use a, a text editor or something that works better for you. So I'm glad you asked. Um, that sets us up nicely to use Glitch each week. And so, yeah, definitely good to make sure that everyone knows where to go and what to do. OK, so with that, I think we're ready to keep keep going with our HTML, mar HTML markup. What do you think, Aisha? Yeah, let's do it. OK. Um, so for some references as well, um, which are linked in the readmes, so in the project that's on our Glitch team, um, there are some resources here. So each week, if there are links that would help you, you know, to help you figure out what other options you have, there will always be resources um, available for you. So the first one is the Mozilla Web Docs, so the Mozilla Developer Network. For those of us who work in the industry, this is a go-to resource and it can help you learn about which elements are available in HTML. Um, since we're using a, a set of them in our examples, we're not touching absolutely everything. So this is a great place to go and learn more about HTML, including tutorials. I've also included what's called a character entity reference so in HTML, there are these little glyphs or little icons. They're sort of pre-emojis, if you think of them that way. Um, they are a standardized set of these little uh, characters. Sometimes, you know, things like E's with accents for different languages. Um, there's some fun ones. I'm gonna grab this heart. So there is a little, there's these different formats of character codes. I'm grabbing the one for hearts. It's an at or an and symbol for an ampersand, the word hearts, and then a semicolon. So I'm actually going to paste that into our little header so that I can have this cute heart in our H1. So it says, hello, Gatsby web creators, and then it has this little heart. And so using that character entity reference, you could add a star or a phone, um, a check mark if you wanted to have a, a checklist of things to keep track of. So you can get creative with those just by copying and pasting and doing some experimentation. Okay, so we've got our header. 
Um, the next thing that I would add is more in the, the body of this. So I'm gonna add another structural element called main. So it's just like our other tags, I do an opening angle bracket, the word main, and then a closing right angle bracket. And then down below, Glitch has automatically closed that element for me, which is really handy. And so inside of main, the name kind of says it on the tin. It's where all of the main content will go. So things that aren't in your header or your footer, which kind of wrap above and below, you can get really creative later on when we get to styling. So you can move things around and kind of add borders and backgrounds and cool colors and things. We're working on the structure and the underlying content. So I'm gonna add one more piece here, which is the footer element. And that's going to go, so we have header, main, and footer, kind of all living as siblings. They sit next to each other. Um, whereas if this H1 here is what we call a nested element. So it's nested inside of the header. And you can do that with most of these elements that have their opening and closing tags. You can nest them together so that you can create this structure. So inside of main, let's add some content. Um, let's see, I was going to add, let's add some content here. So things like, welcome to the stream. And I can add, so this is called a paragraph tag. It's an opening angle bracket, the letter P is in paragraph, and then a closing angle bracket. And I can put any kind of text in there. And the neat thing about paragraphs is they add a little bit of space automatically um, above and below the paragraph. Because if you had two paragraphs, we don't want them to really run up next to each other. This is another paragraph. When that adds to the screen, we can see these paragraphs, uh, they have a little bit of natural margin. That's the browser giving us some structure and style just straight out of the box, which is really neat. Um, there's another element that I wanna show you. Um, and this one I think will come in very handy. It's called an unordered list. So, I do angle bracket, the letters UL for unordered list, and then I close the angle bracket and Glitch automatically closes it for me. So this will wrap a list of items. So that, I said a list of items, that indicates what our next item that goes inside of this is an LI. So it's angle bracket, the letters L and I for list item, and then you close the LI. And so each one of these, I can add things like, um, let's see, what's your favorite animal, Aisha? I think I know what my favorite animal is. Not... Yeah, my favorite animal is definitely a dog. I gotta say, any dog. Any dog. I love dogs. Um, I'm actually going to add another heading here. So we have an H1. And I can add the next, so I think of it like an outline. If you've ever created an outline in Microsoft Word or some other sort of, uh, you know, if you have to write a, an, a book report or some sort of a project and you use like Roman numerals and, and bullets and all of these little icons, you can create some of these with HTML. So I've got a structure here with my headings. So H1 and H2, and now we're adding some list items. Yeah, and um, one thing that I wanted to add, which is really cool about Glitch, is that you can collaborate on these projects. So we've already we've already said that my favorite animal is dogs, but I have another favorite animal. I can add that to our list. Uh, and my other favorite animal is puppies. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Also, a quick shout out to Haitians in Tech. Thank you for the host. I, I can't see the chat, so, I, <laughs> I, so there must be some cool magic going on. Oh, yeah. Nice. I love how collaborative this is. So you could be playing with your friends on creating web pages, which is a dream. I mean, when we were playing with GeoCities way back in the day, that was not a thing. So. Technology has improved a lot so that we can play and get creative. And that's really the goal of the series is to give you the tools and the inspiration to create your own web pages uh, with your own ideas and your own content. So we talked a little bit about nesting. And since puppies and dogs are somewhat related, I'm actually going to take your inspiration 
and I'm going to add a nested list. So I'm going to put a UL inside of another UL. And if I use command right bracket and command left bracket, I can actually change the indentation. On a Windows machine, it's probably control instead of command, so I'm on a Mac. Um, but this way, you can actually create this indented structure. So we have puppies, maybe we have pupperinos, if that you know, strikes your fancy more. Um, I love collecting silly names for animals. Um, and then to, as a sibling to our original list item, maybe we wanna add cats because cats are cool too. There's a cat floating around here somewhere. I think she might be sleeping now. Um, but we could do similar things like add another nested list in here so we could say kittens. Um, and so you can create this structure um, it, which can be very useful. Say your, your class has an online platform and you have to fill in some content. There might be some buttons to create some of this structure. We're creating it by hand, which can be very handy. I, I will tell you, sometimes I will go and click the little hacky, you know, view source button and I'll go and craft some of my own HTML. So this skill can serve you for a very long time, um, creating lists. There's also another kind of list. So we have unordered lists. If we create OL instead of UL, we can have ordered lists, which create numbers instead of these bullets and, and dots. So let's see, what's another list that we could create? I'm gonna add another, uh, another H3. So maybe, maybe like Antarctic animals. Yeah, why not? I'm gonna type Antarctic animals. So we have, oh, this should be an H2 actually, or it could be, I guess you, you can decide kind of what your content structure indicates since our Antarctic animals are a type of animal. This could probably stay as an H3, but I'll, I'll leave it there as an H2. And we can add Antarctic animals like seals. What's another, and I am ranking these in order. <laughs> What do you Ooh. think is another Antarctic animal that we could Seals. add? Penguins. We got to add penguins. Oh, yeah. That's penguins. An, that's an Antarctic animal. Yeah. Yep. Some of the coolest. Ooh. I love those March of the Penguins movies. Talk about a different existence than we have right now. <laughs> Going and living in the South Pole. Um, okay. So we have these two types of lists. This is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so that will really come in handy at different times. And so we have different types of content. We have list items, we have this paragraph text, um, which for longer pieces of content, you know, multiple sentences, you might mark those up as paragraphs. Lists are really meant to be collections of things. They could also be collections of sentences, um, but it's nice to have these tools in your toolbox to mark up different types of content. So let's see, we could also add something more to our header. So we've got two pages here. If we wanted to link between the two, so we've talked a little bit about, you know, a single HTML page, but HTML was actually created to link documents together. So to do that, we could go back to our header and I'm gonna add a nav element for navigation. And inside of here, I'm gonna add an anchor. So I do the opening angle bracket. I'm gonna type an A for anchor. And I will type href, uh, which, let's see, hreference, what does that stand for? Do you know, Aisha? It's a good uh, trivia question. Uh, hypertext reference, yes. Hypertext reference, I like it. Okay, so I have some text. I've wrapped it in an anchor tag. So it's opening with the A, the href, and then it closes with a closing A tag. So the href is really the, the magic like working piece here that we can point to another document. So we have another HTML page here called page-2.html. Um, so I'm just gonna type page2.html. And so we'll see if that works. Um, there, there are some kind of quirks about Glitch. We'll talk about uh, towards the end of the stream today when we get to images. But for, for HTML pages, typically when they are in the same directory, so sitting next to each other in a folder, um, you might upload these to a server if you're putting your website somewhere. Glitch is really handling a lot of that for us, but there are still some quirks. So 
when this rendered or showed up here on the screen, I've got this page two text. And if I click it, it says, hello from page two. And yep, that is what we had there. So um, I haven't built out page two yet in this version. So that link is working. And we could, let's say on page two, maybe we could add another header. And I could say H1, I was going to make this a My Favorite Memes page. We'll see how far we get. Um, but I'm going to add another nav element. And actually, you can shortcut sometimes. If I copy and paste, so I've got this entire nav block. I'm going to do Command-C on my Mac. It would be Control-C on a Windows computer. So inside of this header, I'm going to paste. And I could say. I could say home, I could go, you know, back home. Uh, you can title it whatever you want to indicate that this link is going to go back to what's called the index. And so an index is a fancy word for a home page. Um, so I've got these links now between page two and home, and I can link back and forth. And so this hypertext reference, thanks for the trivia, Aisha. Um, that's a that is a, a great way to link between pages. Um, and so now we have this little network and we can add a whole structure. So you could go in to your own Glitch project and this little new file, you can add a new HTML file and title it whatever you want. You could upload a file if you had one. Um, so you can get really crafty. Pretty awesome. So let's see, what else could we do? Um, there are some really neat formatting elements. So let's say, and we'll get into this more when we talk about styling next week, but HTML does have some built-in styling elements. So there is one called EM for emphasis. And so if I type open angle bracket, EM is in Mary, closing angle bracket, and then I wrap whatever text I want, I can make it italics. So that's pretty neat. I've got hello Gatsby Web Creators and just Gatsby Web Creators is wrapped in this EM tag. So I can make it italics, put some emphasis there. This is already bold because it's, so this H1, it's bold by default in the browser. So let's say I wanted to make some text bold in, in the middle of a paragraph or in the middle of um, a, a list item or something. There's another element called the strong tag. And glitch closing this tag means I have to move the, the closing tag to wrap whatever I want to be bold. And so now this paragraph text is showing up in bold. So that's pretty cool. You can use that in you know paragraphs of text if you really want to draw emphasis to a specific part. That is a good way to do that. Um, HTML gives us some pretty neat tools to format text. OK, so we've got, we've got this page with some cool structure on it. We talked a little bit about HTML entities earlier. I'm going to add another one. I think it's one of the only ones that I remember off the top of my head, which is an ampersand, the word copy, and a semicolon. And it creates a copyright symbol. And I don't know why that's the only one I remember, but we do have this character entity reference. I think I've just typed that one more. Yeah, but that definitely came up a lot, especially in like my my first several websites. I was like, I've decided that I have this copyright. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. teenage Aisha was like, I'm pretty sure I have this copyright. And so I'm gonna put it on my on my web page. You can get really official, you know, it's my web page and I can do what I want with it. Um, so in our footer, that's typically where you might put the the year that your site was made and you might update it every year or you can get crafty with some uh, scripting to update it automatically. But I usually like to attribute my web pages to my dog. So I'm going to do that. His name is Rainier McChetterton. So I could say copy, oh, I need the year 2020 Rainier McChetterton. You could put your own pet's name or your friend or your, you know, really anything here to attribute. You could put your own name if you're being more serious. But um, that's another one of these little entities that's pretty cool. Um, and I think you know we could get really deep into actual copyright if anyone does have questions. That is a component of creating content that we could talk about. Um, we're focused on HTML today, but if anyone does have questions about 
content rights and um, you know how how to include like what you can include on your website. We'll get into that a little bit through the weeks. Um, but the symbols that you can put on your website, you know, nobody's really stopping you. Like I could add another one here on the welcome to the stream. One that I actually do remember is um, ampersand trade for trademark. This one's pretty good. Like if you want to, you know, make something sound really official, you could add the TM, um, even though you don't necessarily have a trademark legally, but it's kind of a fun icon to add. So there's all kinds of those little um, entities that are pretty fun to add. Definitely appreciating the dog theme going on here. Uh, I didn't even think about it, but in fact, my water bottle is a Detroit dog rescue water bottle as well. Perfect. I love it. My dog is not in this room. Otherwise, he'd probably come join us. Um, okay, so we've got some good stuff going on here. Let's see. What else do we want to add? We have included quite a few things so far. Um, we could add a little bit more structure to our body section. Um, so as we talked about earlier, so the head, we don't, we don't really see anything that's like the behind the scenes stuff other than the title. Everything within the body, we can add some what's called semantic structure. So we have some of that so far with the header and main and the headings. Um, those are really powerful foundational building blocks um, to have in your HTML building uh, toolbox. There are some additional ones. So for example, inside of main, if I wanted to mark up sections, there is a section element. So I'm going to wrap our, our H2 for the animals and our, our nested lists. I'm indenting again with command right bracket on my Mac. And so inside of this main, I can actually section out different amounts of content. And depending on, you know, if you need to go deeper than that, there's more elements like the article element. You know, if you were building, you know, an online magazine for yourself or something, um, you can go much deeper into creating this structure. And the Mozilla Developer Network has all of those elements that go beyond what we're covering today. But let's say I wanted to add another section. This is sort of a behind the scenes element that is adding some structure to our page so that um, blind people and people using what's called screen readers, they can actually digest our web pages a bit better with some of the structure in here. So using the headings is a really great practice to just adding, you know, not only the text on the screen, but adding some of this meaning um, so that screen readers actually work better. Okay, so I think we've got a pretty good setup here. I would love to talk about images. So we have this assets directory. I have pre-populated it with some, <laughs> some images. So we That's have a wonderful. Gatsby logo. The Gatsby logo is used on our, our README markdown file. We aren't really going to pull it into a web page. But I do have some memes here, including the bear with bear with me. There's this, uh, what do you call it when there's four images? It's like a. A diptych is two images, a triptych is three. I don't even have a word for four, but it's got four up and it's different animals in cowboy hats saying, what in tarnation? I just love it so much. Um, I think I'm gonna grab this image. So I clicked on the image in Glitch in the assets folder. This is my mom's former cat named Jasmine. And I re lovingly refer to her as bag of burritos. She actually wasn't really a fat cat. She's just really fluffy, um, but she's now forever known as bag of burritos. So Glitch, I mentioned a little bit earlier that Glitch does some like kind of crafty things that are a bit unique. And one of them is how we work with images. So when you upload an image, you really have to open it up um, in the interface and it will give you this URL. So I'm gonna hit copy. If you wanted to, to delete an image, you could do that here as well. Um, we also have a really great lemur meme here that says, thank you, but no. Thank you, but no. Um, but I'm going to go back to the index HTML file and I'm going to add, since we have a cat section, I'm going to add an image of like right below that list since it seems relevant. I'm going to do the open angle bracket, the words IMG for image, and then I'm going to write oh, it's image space and then source, the source attribute for um, what image are you going to show. So source equals and open and closing quotes which Glitch automatically uh, fixes for us. 
So I pasted using Command V on my Mac. It would be Control V on Windows. And at, after the closing quote, which Glitch automatically added for me, I'm going to add another attribute that says Alt for alternative text. And I typed an opening quote. And so inside of the two quotes that Glitch has fixed for me, I'm going to say, let's see, Jasmine the cat. And this is a close self-closing element. So I, after the alt attribute, uh, I typed a space and then a, a angle bracket, or sorry, a slash, and then a closing angle bracket. Um, and so this creates an image tag. And it loaded automatically. So we have Bag of Burritos Cat here on the screen, which is pretty awesome. So that is how you can pull in your assets from the assets directory. In a typical, you know, if you were working on your computer, um, you wouldn't have this whole long URL. You could just um, point it to, you know, the assets directory and then the file name, similar to our, so how we have this page two.html. That's more of a typical linking scenario. So it's pointing to something in the same directory. The assets are a bit of a unique situation here on Glitch. Um, and so if you want to learn more about images, that's another one to look up on the um, hypertext reference. So if I look at image, the image embed element, um, this will teach you some demos on how to work with this tag um, with files that might be on your computer. So we've got an image. We have text. So the alt text is really neat. In case the image doesn't load, for example, like maybe your internet's kind of going in and out. Um, let's see, if you're using a screen reader, so if you're blind and you're navigating through a web page, this is really helpful to have text that describes what's happening on the screen. If it's kind of a, a junk image that's just in there for like a background or something, you can also leave the alt attribute blank and it will still show the image, um, but it will safely um, kind of ignore it. But this does have some good content in it. So I'm gonna put Jasmine the cat back in here since it is nice to know. I mean, bag of burritos is, you wouldn't necessarily know that that's a picture of a cat. So that's where the alt text is really helpful. Okay, so we have lots of good stuff on here. I feel like we could, um, unless there's any questions right now, we could start building out our, our memes page so we have a cool back and forth between the two. But I will yeah, ask for questions. So, okay. If there aren't any questions, we can go over to this memes page, um, which we could link in some of these other um, these other assets. So. Yeah, and throughout the stream, if folks have questions, feel free to post them in the chat. Um, Marcy won't necessarily see them immediately, but Caitlin and I will, and we'll make sure that we get them answered. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, let me know, and I can answer them at any time. Um, okay, so I love this lemur. It just, it's got so much sass. I think I'm going to add the lemur to our memes page. And a quick uh, note that this second page is called page two. You could title it whatever you want and it will actually become part of the URL. So I could call this my favorite memes. Um, it's called page two right now, but you can customize those file names as long as your linking is updated as well. But for page two, I'm gonna leave this here right now and let's see inside of main. So I'm gonna put a main element here and we have, the one thing about Glitch is when you're working on a second page like this, it sort of resets you back to the first page. So you do have to click this page to, um, to show this second page. So it's a bit of a, a, a bit of a glitch, you could say. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really bad pun. Uh, but I, what I wanna do on the second page is pull in some of these memes and I have some jokes that might be awesomely bad. So I'm gonna add a new kind of element that we haven't seen yet called the figure element. And this is a great one for marking up images. Um, I'm gonna pull in our friend, the image. So IMG SRC. I've Sweet. got this. We, so I'm sorry to interrupt Marcy, but we actually got a sweet tip uh, from Potch who works at Glitch. Potch is here, what's up? <laughs> awesome. Uh, Patch says, if you click change URL, you can pin the preview to the other page. 
Ah, page two to the HTML. Nice. We that also got um, we also got a question from Jake. String of numbers, I can't remember right now. Um, but Jake asked, "Can you add a link to images so that it'll open to another URL? Like, could you use an image as a link?" Yes, you could. Um, yeah. So, for example, I could put an href and point it to an image. So I have this link, I put the text um, as the word image, and that would link, it should link to an image, but I guess it's not for whatever reason. Um, but you could wrap an image in a link as well. So what normally happens is if you have a link to an image, it will open that image by itself in the browser. And you might see that in, you know, content management systems, if you are working on a learning platform for school or, or work or something, you might see that if you click on an image and it'll open it by itself, you can do that by putting a link um, and putting the source to an image resource. Um, but for whatever reason that wasn't working here, that's okay. So I've got the figure, so I'm wrapping this image and I'm going to add a caption. So the fig caption element is a really neat one. It adds an automatic caption. So I'm gonna write a joke. How does the lemur get to work? Oh dear. <laughs> After and the I, puns from earlier, I'm, I'm bracing. <laughs> Brace yourself. So here's another element that we can use, a self-closing element called the BR tag, which is a break tag. Um, so it's open angle bracket, the letters BR for break, then a space, then the slash and the closing angle bracket. And that will automatically break the text down to the next line. So for a joke that's part of a caption or in a paragraph, you know, you might want the punchline to drop to the next line. So I'm using a BR tag for that. Okay, are you ready for this? Okay, I how, think does so. it, how does the lemur get to work? It takes, oh, my keyboard. It takes its Madagascar. Oh. Because <laughs> lemurs are from Madagascar, you know? Oh, it's so bad. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but so we've got an image and a big caption. I do love that this joke is awesomely bad. And then the lemur is like, thank you, but no, just really. <laughs> He's had enough of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Codeability so... also says, oh, Marcy. <laughs> I, know. I love these. These images, by the way, live on my computer all the time. And I pulled them out just for this audience. So. <laughs> We have one more. I want to do the bear because, you know, we have a little more time. I think we have time to add another another meme and another joke. So I'm going to add another figure element here. And I'm going to add our friend the image source. I'm going to paste this alt or this image source and in the alt I'm going to say a bear. Um, and actually these alt texts could be a bit more descriptive. A lemur saying and I'm going to do um, I'm doing quotes within quotes. So we have double quotes for our attributes in HTML. I could put you know, another type of quote inside of there by using single quotes as long as they have matching um, so that it's you know, opening and closing in the right time. So I could say lemur saying, thank you, but no. And then I could say bear saying, and then the single quote, bear with me, which I love. So bear with me. Okay, so here's our another joke. Fig caption. Inside of our fig caption, how do bears keep their houses cool in the summer? And I'm going to do the break tag. So it's just the self closing. I'm going to drop it down the next line. Are you ready for this? Bear conditioning. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. So we've got our memes page. I mean, you could really collect your favorite memes like I do on my computer, but you could put these jokes alongside. And then when you get tired of yourself, you can just delete the fig caption and have it just be the meme. <laughs> um, but it's a pretty fun thing. Like you could collect your favorite, you know, whatever you're into and create your own web page and share it with your friends. You could play around with these and have, you know, joke battles with your friends, which sounds pretty fun to me. And we have this link, so we can go back and forth between our two pages. I'm pretty happy with these results. Um, we have, looks like, 11 minutes left. So 
any questions that we can help answer at this time before we do our last bonus round of tricks. Looks like we are good to go. Let's see those tricks, Marcy. Okay, so I have, um, I'm gonna go back to, so I had this pinned um, page two. I'm gonna go back to the index just by deleting page two. So that becomes our, uh, our page that we view every time. That was an awesome trick, by the way. Thank you, Potch. Um, okay, so we've got this Gatsby Web Creators. So if you really want to get crafty and feel like you're a web hacker, there's this bonus attribute that I want to give to you. So attributes being these extra items that we add on to HTML elements. On the main element, and I could really put this on any of these, I'm going to type space and then the word content editable. This is a magic attribute because it makes anything, if I can get this to work, maybe it won't work on main. Let's try it somewhere else. Oh, I'm on the wrong page, first of all. Go back to the page we're actually working on. So here, if I put content editable on the page that I'm actually looking at, oh, look at this. Animals, people, you can make any web page content editable. Um, it's not actually saving it. So like if we, if I go over here, this code still says animals, but the page says people. Um, this is just a really fun trick. Like if you want to, you know, play a prank on your friend and take a screenshot of something really important and freak them out, <laughs> you could go and make something content editable. I'm going to put this back to animals the way it was. Um, but content editable is really fun because you can make anything editable. So you could just, you know, be typing, um, if I hit refresh here, it puts it back to the way it was. So it's sort of a, you know, temporary change that you can do for just long enough to like fake somebody out, which is kind of fun. Um, let's see, the other thing that I wanted to show you in our last few minutes is the best kind of, I don't know what I think the best web hacking tool is the developer tools in the browser. So in Glitch, we're sort of, you know, looking at our page source and then how it renders or how it displays in the browser. Um, in Chrome, we also have what's called the developer tools. And so I'm going to type, uh, I have the control key on my Mac, and that gives me this little like context menu so I can go inspect. And that will pull up this little magic panel here in the browser to show what's actually happening on this page. So I could go in here and say, maybe instead of hello, I say goodbye Gatsby Web Creators. And so this is sort of like the content editable in that it's only editing it here in this rendered display. It's not actually updating my original source. Um, and this in particular is where I've seen people play those kinds of tricks you were talking about earlier. Uh, I had a friend who, tricked her husband into thinking that his team had lost a game because she did this on like a news site. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, you, you do need to use it responsibly. I don't wanna give anyone the wrong ideas, um, but it can be kind of fun to like, if you wanna create a screenshot and you just need to tweak it slightly, like the text is breaking to a weird line and you just need to tweak it a little bit to get your, get your work done or something, it can be really cool for that. Um, and it is really neat to go in and inspect how every web page is made. So, you know, take any site that you visit, you can go see how is it marked up? What does it look like? You know, can I play with this? And um, we'll get into styling next week and look at, you know, how can I modify this to learn something about how a web page is made? And that can be really neat. Um, so, yeah, let's say. I wanted to change the copyright on a site to make it look like I built it or something. You could do that um, either using content editable. Um, I can also edit things like I could remove that content editable or add it. If I was playing with a website and I wanted to make something content editable, I can do that right here in the developer tools and it will have that same effect. Um, and to show this to you again, so if I removed it from the original source, I could still go here. And so I'm doing a control click on the element and I can do add attribute and I could say content editable. Um, and this is just adding it sort of in the browser display versus the original source. So you can do that on any web page and play around with it um, or even just inspect, you know, how is this made? 
Um, how did they professionally build a website? That can be a really informative tool. And so I wanted to show you these developer tools um, because this element inspector, and there is a similar version in Firefox and Safari, so any browser that you're in, you can really impress people with your ability to look under the hood and see how web pages are made. Um, so those are my two bonus tricks at the end of the stream, or the content editable and the developer tools. Um, I could even come in here and let's say I wanted to change uh, or I wanted to remove an element or something, or I could change this to emphasis instead of bolding. I can go play with that and sort of non-destructively and see, uh, you know, how, how would this look if I made this change? And then if I decide I want to keep it, I can go into my code and actually change it. Say I like the emphasis more than the bold. Um, it's kind of a, a way to play around with really any website, not only the ones that you've made, Yes, and that's really uh, my, that was my real point earlier. Definitely uh, don't try to trick your friends, but you can use this as a tool to learn how other sites are building their web pages. I definitely use that as a way to figure out how to lay things out, how to organize my HTML. Yes, especially as you get into, you know, websites that are more sophisticated, more what we call web applications, that they might be built with other technologies that render HTML or create HTML like this in the browser. But the way that their original source looks for the people working on the site, when they're making changes, it might look very different. And so being able to inspect kind of the end state of a website or a web application, um, it's all done here in the developer tools. So you have now been granted the the ability to go and look in the dev tools and, and inspect things, which can be really interesting. You might even see on some websites, um, like I know on Facebook, for example, they have a big warning. They'll be like, don't go here, um, because you can make changes that can mess up the page. And if that happens, um, you can just hit the refresh and it'll put it right back to the way it was. Um, I think they just, you know, unless you are, tinkering kind of knowing you know what it's for you can do some damage at least you know in the, the display of it but if you just refresh the page it'll go back to the way it was um so yeah if there's any last questions i think we're nearing the end of our first hour all right Sounds like we're good. All right, so on Friday, we're gonna join at the same time for an hour, and we're gonna be looking at pulling in content from other sources. So say a YouTube video or finding text and images out on the web, how to pull those into your web pages. So we'll build on what we did today, and then we'll each week we'll layer a new building block on top. So by the end of this stream series, you should know a lot more about the web platform and how to build web pages that everyone can visit. Awesome. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks so much for joining. And, and thanks to our captioner and to Caitlin for helping us organize the stream. We really appreciate having everyone here today. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see you all on Friday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Awesome.